started your kind of life in politics uh, in the Reagan administration, and then you served in the administration of George H.W. Bush and then George W. Bush, though so you're a bona fide Republican. Right. Um, and I think one of the questions that we want to kind of delve into is, um, isn't this a golden age from the policy perspective for the conservative agenda? Again, before the coronavirus blew it up, but you know, you kind of look at tax cuts, cuts in regulation, a host of Supreme Court and other judge appointments. This would seem to be kind of a golden age for conservatives. Yeah, it's great to be with you, Larry. Thanks, thanks for uh, hosting us, and also to be here with uh, with David as um, as well. Um, yeah, in terms of your question, I, I think I would refine it a little bit. I don't think this is the golden age for conservative uh, policy. Um, I, I think that if you look back at the uh, Reagan and George W. Bush administrations, there was a lot more achieved. Uh, if you took the full range of conservative policies. I'm certainly, uh, as a critic of Donald Trump and a conservative, I would certainly grant him some achievements on conservative policy grounds, which you mentioned, the, the most obvious ones. Judicial appointments. Supreme Court's a little more complicated. Um, Judge Gorsuch wrote an opinion on um, uh, having to do with gay rights, which, which upset a lot of people on, on, the, uh, on the right. So the so-called but Gorsuch movement uh, wasn't quite as strong as they thought, but certainly below the Supreme Court, the judicial appointments I think have been, have been strong. Federalist Society, which is the main uh, institution for judges have, have, have been very helpful there. And he did cut taxes. Um, I think it was a, you know, a mediocre, but maybe marginally helpful bill and regulatory relief on the flip side. I would say that he's actually upended uh, conservatism, at least conservatism as I've understood it. He's a protectionist um, and conservatives have traditionally been, been uh, free, free trade. Uh, conservatives have at least theoretically cared about deficits and debt and pre COVID-19, um, the deficit and debt exploded under Trump. Entitlement reform, which has been central. Paul Ryan was instrumental in that uh, to try and get the Republican party in favor of entitlement reform. Trump was against that. He's done very little on education reform. Um, and uh, then when you get into international affairs, America has traditionally been a leader of, in international affairs, making morality a centerpiece of foreign policy. Trump has undone that. So I think it's a mixed bag. Well, the thing I would say is that as a conservative, I do think policy matters. I spent most of my life in public policy, but that's not by any means how uh, I fully define conservatism. I think conservatism has to do with political philosophy and, and a certain kind of disposition, um, which we can, we can get into. But some of that has to do with epistemological humility, respect for human experience, aversion to fanaticism, uh, a belief in the complexity of human society, belief in objective truth, um, and a whole range of things. And, and I think that what Donald Trump has done is has assaulted a lot of the areas of conservative, let's say, political philosophy and disposition done great damage to the Republican Party, done great damage to the conservative movement. And the final thing I'll say is I don't even consider him really a conservative. I consider him a populist, an ethnic nationalist. It's the kind of thing that we're seeing in, uh, in Europe in a lot of, of cases. So I think he's actually broken with conservatism, redefined it in a negative way.